That's right everyone, we have Norse Canada. What if Vikings still existed in 1444? Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be seeing what would happen if Vikings still existed in 1444. If you enjoy this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 30% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So as you can see, it's December 1st, 1444, and I have changed up the map a little bit because we're gonna explore the scenario that you just heard about. So let's go over everything that I've changed. As you can see, there are some new nations on the map and some old ones have shrunk or maybe even grown. First off, let's take a look at Denmark and you can notice that they don't have Sweden or Norway as junior partners anymore. That's right, Norway is independent, Sweden is also independent, and Iceland is is independent from Norway and Sápmi and Finland are independent from Sweden. Now look, I know what you're gonna say, Sápmi and Finnish people, they were never Vikings, but in this scenario I wanted to include all Norse cultures. So this is the Nordic culture group, it contains Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, Sámi and Icelandic. So I wanted to make all of those nations, you know, participate in this scenario even though some of them weren't ever Viking nations. So this is what the map looks like, we have Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Sweden, Finland, Sápmi, and Iceland, and a little surprise that I'm gonna show you later. What else has changed though? Well, if we go into the religion map mode, we can see that all of these nations are Norse religions, so they all follow the Norse faith, and that is something that has changed for these nations. Going over here, this is what Iceland looks like. They have these two provinces along with this one right here. This is what Norway looks like. They have their usual provinces and these two over here off the coast of Great Britain. Denmark has also grown a bit, taking this province from Holstein and Holstein isn't a subject of Denmark. This is what Sweden looks like. They have shrunk the most because I have released the Finnish cultured provinces and the Sami cultured provinces from them. These nations are also Norse. Yes, I know they never were Norse and I know they weren't Vikings, but I still wanted to include them and uh, see what can happen with them. Another thing I did, I also gave all of these nations 3 stability, 100 prestige, 1000 ducats and 10k manpower. So they all start off on the same, you know, sort of level or a similar level at least and this is what the map looks like now you may be wondering hey where's goatland they should exist here right they got a core well i wanted to include vinland but as you guys know vinland doesn't exist in eu4 and i took inspiration from the third odyssey mod which i covered a while ago so check that video out if you haven't yet but we have these three provinces right here in newfoundland owned by goatland so let's just say goatland is vinland or something like that you know the vikings went over to a America, these guys decided to stay and now we have Gotland instead of Vinland and uh, it's present there instead of here so that's a way I wanted to represent Gotland. Now another thing they are also Norse of course but they are technologically advanced they have tech 5 and they start off with exploration ideas unlocked I wanted to give them an opportunity to expand before the European nations arrive I know it's not historically accurate but all of these what if scenarios aren't historically accurate and uh, yeah these are the nations that will participate in this scenario. Gotland, which is basically supposed to be Vinland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, and Sápmi. What do you think will happen in this scenario? Will the Viking nations start to dominate the world and conquer everything around them? Will they get defeated very easily because, well, they're not together, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark? Will Sweden get eaten up by Finland and Sápmi? What will Iceland do? What will Gotland slash Vinland do now that they're technologically superior? Leave your predictions in the comments below, and if you want to play this scenario, for yourself this save file is available to all youtube members in the save games discord channel let's kick start this scenario and we'll check back in in 1480 so now it's 1489 oops nine years too late sorry about that but let's take a look at everything that has happened starting off with the nordic region and we can see that denmark has been expanding they've taken this province from sweden and they've also expanded well in the usual place they expand over here in the baltic they've taken these provinces over here along with these three right here and they've blocked off Novgorod and Muscovy. Going up here, Sweden have grown and shrunk at the same time. Basically, a couple of years ago, the nation of Sápmi didn't exist. They got gobbled up by Sweden and Novgorod. And in fact, Novgorod owned these provinces, but I'm guessing that they've lost since then because Finland have also expanded into their previous provinces over here. Like I said, the nation of Sápmi didn't exist, but it seems that they have popped out of this province once again. Norway have also expanded. They've taken this province right here, along with this province right here from Sámi and this one up 
up here. So they are looking pretty good, but they have lost these two provinces over here to Scotland. Speaking of Scotland, they've also taken this province from Iceland. Iceland doesn't exist. Now these provinces are once again owned by Norway. So the first nation that disappeared, well, it was actually Sápmi, but now they're back. But it's Iceland. Iceland is gone. So this is what things look like over in Europe. There has been some religious conversion done. Basically, once Novgorod took these provinces, it made them into Orthodox. So we can see that they're actually still Orthodox, but now they have been gained back by the Norse nations. Will they be converting them back to Norse? We have yet to see. But that's how things are looking like over here. Denmark is looking like the strongest nation, and I'm actually very pleasantly surprised by Norway. Looks like Sweden is going to be the first nation to go since Denmark, Norway, and Finland have all allied each other, and Sweden has allied Muscovy. That's not a weak ally, but, you know, we'll see what will happen. Going over to the New World, we can see that Gotland have also been expanding. You know, Gotland slash Vinland, they've taken these three provinces, these two are fully colonized, and they're working on this one right now. But they're not ahead on tech anymore. 667, as we can see, the most technologically advanced nation seems to be Austria, 688, Albania, 787, not bad. But this is due to the fact that they don't have the Renaissance. Oh, actually, they do. Well, they've just started getting it just a bit. But things have balanced out, and I think it was a good choice giving them a little tech at the start so they don't fall back too much. Either way, that's how things are looking like right now. Aside from that, nothing too strange. Granada has expanded into Castile, but I think that will be the end of them since Castile have allied England, Venice, Portugal, and they already have Aragon. So a nice little start for Granada, but I think they'll decline. Savoy is looking pretty good too, so is France, and everything else seems pretty standard. Oh, we have an early Manchu over here. That's nice. So now it's 1531. Let's take a look at everything that's changed in the past, well, 40 years. Starting off with this region right here, we can see that there's actually not a lot of changes. Denmark still owns the provinces that they used to own, but Denmark and Pretender Rebels. Name a more iconic duo. Yep, they're having some trouble with that. Lots of Pretender Rebels right here. These guys, they can't fight them. Danish Pretender Rebels in Sweden as well, and even another stack over here. So yeah, these Griff guys, they're definitely getting on the throne. Look, there's three of them. Maximilian, Emmanuel, and Joachim. Either way, Sweden hasn't changed either, and neither has Norway. They're still looking the same. Actually, Norway, they have gotten these three provinces back from Scotland. Of course, they took advantage of Scotland's demise to England, and they've gotten them back, so that's pretty nice. Finland, they got these provinces over here for some reason. Not sure they can reach them this way, but uh, yeah, they should be able to. Either way, Muscovy have completely annihilated Novgorod. They're still allied to Sweden, by the way, along with the Livonian Order and Ryazan. Finland's still allied to Norway and Denmark. Sweden's allied to Austria as well now. So even though Sweden hasn't allied their neighbors, they've allied two very powerful nations in Austria, who has Hungary, by the way and in Muscovy. They're looking pretty big. They're probably gonna be forming Russia. Going over to the New World, this is how Vinland slash Gotland looks. They have expanded quite a bit. They're now even more behind on tech, but that's fine. That's expected. And they're currently in a war with Mi'kmaq in the Gotlander conquest of that province that I'm not gonna try and pronounce. They're also elected to the nation of Iroquois with this greenish color right here. So nice expansion from them. Still no European nations in North America, but we do have Castile over here. Portugal and Castile down here and even the English down in South America. So they will be getting to Gotland pretty soon and I'm excited to see the dynamic that goes on there. The Protestant Reformation has spawned by the way lots of centers of reformation popping up. We have four already, three Protestant ones and one reform one and one province over here in Denmark has been converted. I don't know if these guys can actually go uh, reformed with the decision in the religion tab but will their provinces get converted enough or will rebels win? Let's see, let's see. Overall nothing too crazy from the Viking nations so far. So now it's 1581. Let's take a look at what has happened in the past 50 years. Right off the bat, we can see a huge Sweden and a huge Muscovy. Iceland is gone, Sápmi is gone, and now Finland is gone as well. We can see that Muscovy have snaked all the way over here into Norway's provinces, even down here and over here. Sweden have also expanded into Norway, taking some of these provinces from them, as well as some over here. But I see you guys wondering, what's up with Swedish Tver? And if we click on Sweden, we can see that, well, they have Muscovy as a junior partner, and they're completely loyal. So that's something very crazy and very unexpected. Now, I do have a question about this, and maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below, but how did this actually happen? Now, I know for PUs to happen, only the junior partner 
needs to be a Christian denomination, so Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, Reformed, or whatever. The senior partner doesn't need to be Christian. Okay, so that's likely, right? That's how you see the Ottomans sometimes P.U. Akuyunlu, if Akuyunlu become Coptic. But my specific question about this is, I don't think Christian nations can marry non-Christian nations. So how did Muscovy become a junior partner under Sweden without them actually being well married? My only theory is Muscovy somehow got the von Wittelsbach dynasty from another nation in Europe, as we all know, a bunch of nations start out with that dynasty, Denmark, these Bavarian nations over here. So maybe Muscovy got it from some of them somehow. And Sweden, of course, already had the von Wittelsbach dynasty. So maybe that's how it happened. Sweden had the most prestige or whatnot, or maybe they even claimed their throne. I don't think they did. Yeah, if you guys know or have another theory about how this happened, please let me know in the comments below. Of course, this isn't something unexpected. We have seen the Mamluks PU Byzantium in one of these what if videos before. But yeah, that's what's been going on over here. And Sweden and Muscovy have obviously expanded into Finland and into Norway as well. Denmark, they're not doing too hot right now. They're, uh, oh, the War of the Protestant League is going on, actually. Let's take a look at the Religious League map mode. And these are the participants. So the green guys are the Catholic guys. Blue ones are the Protestant guys. I think the Protestant guys are a little bit stronger. These are the sides in the HRE interface. Ooh, and actually, Austria has passed four reforms. Wow. That's uh, that's also something unexpected. I don't think they'll be passing anymore though. So that's the situation in Europe right now. This is the religious map mode, by the way. Going over to North America, we can see Canada. That's right, everyone. We have Norse Canada. Obviously, the nation of Gotland slash Vinland have formed Canada. And uh, yeah, this is what they look like right now. They're losing a war to Mi'kmaq. So now it's the 1630s, another 50 years have passed. Let's take a look at everything that's happened. And we can notice that, well, in Europe, there aren't a lot of changes. Looks like Sweden has, uh, well, maybe lost a province here to Muscovy, but let's see, Muscovy is still a junior partner under Sweden, although they are 100% independent, so they might be declaring their independence war pretty soon over here, I'm thinking. Sweden is allied to Austria and Mantua, I think Muscovy could beat them. Norway is over here, they're just chilling. They're in a war with, ah, Canada, of course, also known as Vinland or Gotland, in the second Norwegian conquest of Guaymi. So let's see where that exactly is, and, uh, oh, well, we have Malice Seat right here here with some Canadian separatists with a three-star general, by the way, 6410. I guess he can shoot, but he can't siege, huh? Either way, it seems that Canada have uh, moved over to Panama, and this is where they're located right now. Let's see if we can find their capital, and their capital actually seems to be right here in Managua. Of course, this is a Norse religion. Of course, it is a Swedish culture. Ah, we also have some Norwegian. Speaking of Norwegian, these, well, this is still their province, but this was their colony as well. Now it's been taken over by Canada because Norway declared on them, but they lost and now it's owned by them. So that's how things are looking like over here. Malaseet is in charge of some Norse provinces up here, although they may be converting them to totemist. Going back to Europe, Iceland has popped out again. They are once again Norse. Maybe they popped out during the war with Canada. Maybe Canada released them. Maybe they popped out due to rebels. Either way, Denmark are just chilling right now. Denmark and rebel problems once again. Name a more iconic duo. And they have an Oldenburg and then a Habsburg on the throne. Sweden, they still have a Wittelsbach on the throne, and I think Muscovy will be breaking free pretty soon. The Pope is having a nice game. Burgundy's still alive. Britain is having an exceptionally good game. So is Portugal. The Ottomans, nothing unusual, but Albania and Bosnia still exist. So that's uh, a little weird. They are being guaranteed. So Ottomans, maybe not that strong in the European sense. This is the religious map mode. As we can see, the Norse faith has shrunk a little. Strong Protestant Reformation, both Burgundy and France have gone reformed, and Protestant won and is the official faith of the HRE. Bohemia are sticking with Austria's four past reforms, but they won't be passing any reforms of theirs anytime soon. This is what Asia is looking like. We got a nice Manchu over there and nothing else out of the ordinary as far as I can notice. So now is the 1680s. Let's Let's take a look at all the changes that have happened and we can see that well I don't think Norway exists anymore let's take a look at the new world and try and find them they did have some provinces over here but they seem to have been full annexed by Sweden they did have only like three or four provinces here so obviously they lost a war to Sweden where Sweden took these provinces as well along with these ones in the new world of course that's not a lot for just one war and Sweden have expanded into Denmark as well taking some of their provinces that were located over here in the Scania area as well as their 
capital of Copenhagen. Now Denmark's capital is, well, let's try and find it. Ah, it's right here in Kolding. They do still have Muscovy. Muscovy are still 100% disloyal and their independence is supported by Poland. Dude, I had a game as Lipe where I was doing the stiff upper Lipe achievement on Twitch. So follow me on Twitch if you haven't, by the way, twitch.tv slash the Red Hawk Live, where Austria and Hungary got into a PU under Constance. Sorry, Bergans, not Constance. I supported their independence. I was huge. They had 100% liberty desire. They weren't declaring. Me, Austria, and Hungary weren't declaring on Bergans. So no wonder Muscovy right here isn't declaring on Sweden, even though I think they are a little bit more powerful. Although Austria are pretty strong and they are Sweden's ally. Either way, that's how things are looking like over here. Taking a look at the religious map mode, of course, Norse has shrunk, similar to last time. Looks like Sweden haven't converted these provinces over here yet. Iceland still exists. No allies, just some rebels. We have Swedish provinces up here and in Greenland, Maliseet is still here and we still have Canadian provinces too. Canada, meanwhile, their main base of power is still in Panama. Aside from that, Great Britain has expanded quite a bit into Europe. They've even taken Paris and France isn't looking so good. Castile is having a good game. Still haven't integrated Aragon, by the way. Still haven't formed Spain, by the way. Why aren't they doing it? Who knows? Maybe Aragon is too big or maybe they just don't want to integrate them. Who knows? North America looks like this, dominated by Castile and the British over here with lots of strong native nations in the eastern portion. This is South America, once again dominated by the British and Castilians. Nothing too strange in Africa. Portugal is dominating this portion, Castilian South Africa, and nothing too strange in India. Manchu is pretty big, so is Transoxiana, and uh, Cooch, uh, a rather unassuming Indian nation, has taken over this portion right here. Do we have anyone weird colonizing Australia? Nope, it's just Portugal. We have the British and Castilians over here in the Indonesian islands. Taking a look at the Great Powers list real quick, we can see that Sweden are actually on the Great Powers list, one of our main nations of focus for this scenario. So now is the 1730s, we are in the Age of Revolutions. Let's take a look at if the revolution actually spawned and uh, oh, it does look like it has spawned. Where's the center of revolution? I can't seem to know. Oh, there it is. It spawned in this province, Shomodei, which is owned by Austria. And actually, it has spread relatively far in these uh, past 30 years. We have a couple of revolutionary nations, most notably Revolutionary Castile. They're in this sort of wine color and they are the revolutionary target. Revolutionary Castile. It has also spread to Portugal, to Aragon, France, even Great Britain, some Italian nations. We can see that Siena is revolutionary. So is Milan. Surprisingly, they have the Italian flag. Nice. A couple of more nations in the HRE, such as Memmingen, Constance, Nuremberg, Bremen, Munster, and nations like that. But the biggest nation is obviously Castile. Aside from that, Sweden has expanded. As we can see, they've taken these provinces over here from Lithuania. While well, Lithuania themselves, they've expanded in this region down here. Muscovy, by the way, they're no longer disloyal. So I wonder if Sweden will be able to start integrating them or if Muscovy still have more provinces than Sweden. In that case, Sweden wouldn't be able to integrate them. But it's nice that we've seen some growth from them. They have this militarist ruler right here and this is what they desire right now. So I'm guessing they will be fighting Lithuania again. By the way, they also have Berg as a junior partner as well and Muscovy is loyal but Berg is disloyal. Oh my god. And they're already right here. They have some pretender rebels so uh, pretty soon Berg might actually be breaking free. I don't think Sweden can get troops down here to wipe these guys out and neither can Berg. Aside from that, this is what the map is is looking like. Not too much changes from last time. The Ottomans have been expanding in this direction. Albania have also expanded as far as I can see. The Ottomans are also present right here in Italy, so that's pretty funny. Britain is growing. They have taken over Iceland. This is North America. Let's see if Canada still exists. They do, they do. Let's take a look at their provinces. It seems that they only own these three provinces over here, along with the province of Bermuda right here. So now it's 1780, and Sweden just lost a big war to Lithuania. And they were fighting Denmark, Poland, Revolutionary Austria, and Venice. We can see that Lithuania has taken a bunch of provinces over here from, uh, well, specifically Muscovy, but some from Sweden as well. Maybe even that one Swedish province that was left down here. Man, who knew that AI Lithuania could be such a juggernaut? Either way, Muscovy, they're still a junior partner of Sweden. Have Lithuania taken Moscow? Yes, they have. So they've actually taken a lot more provinces than I thought they would take. Ah, we can see exactly what they took right here in this map mode. These are the provinces that they've taken. They haven't them yet. The war just recently ended, by the way. And yeah, things
things aren't looking that good for Sweden. Overall, not very successful thus far for all the Viking nations. By the way, Denmark, they've gone back to Catholic. So Sweden is the only Norse nation left. Well, not really. I guess they made Muscovy become Norse too. I think that's where that uh, massive liberty desire came from, but also from their size as well. Norse Muscovy. Who'd have thunk it, huh? But that's what things are looking like over in Europe. The revolution has taken an even bigger grasp. We have revolutionary Austria now. They're the revolutionary target. Castile is revolutionary too. We have Brittany up there. Other revolutionary nations over here. A bunch of them, although they are small. Can the Pope even go revolutionary? I wonder if we are going to see something as cursed as that. But yeah, we can see that a lot of nations have already embraced it. It's present pretty much in the entirety of Europe with the exception of Poland, Lithuania, Sweden. Sweden and Muscovy so everyone else yeah they could become revolutionary pretty much at any point this is North America no colonies breaking free just yet none of them seem to be that disloyal although actually they are they are starting to ally each other so yeah we'll see what happens over there shout out to Powhatan though so now it's January 3rd 1821 the end of this scenario and let's take a look at what would happen if the Vikings existed in 1444 basically our starting setup was Denmark Norway and Sweden are all independent, Finland and Sápmi, along with Iceland all existed and Gotland represented Vinland over in Newfoundland. All of these nations were Norse at the beginning of the game and let's take a look at how all of them fared. Sápmi, that was located right here, they were the first nation to disappear. Of course that was expected, they were the weakest. After that, Finland got gobbled up and they stopped existing too, along with Iceland which was taken over by Norway. And then pretty much Denmark, Sweden and Norway were left in Europe along with Gotland over over here and they were expanding a bit over here in this region before moving over to Panama where they still exist as Canada. King Richard, I'm not gonna say his last name, Norse and yeah, this is where they're present, these three provinces along with Bermuda. After that in Europe, Norway stopped existing after it was gobbled up by Sweden and Sweden started having a really good game after or they weirdly PU'd Muscovy and it seems to have happened again, they also PU'd Berg. My theory is that Muscovy somehow got a Wittelsbach and that's how they PU'd them, even though they aren't Christian. But wait, I guess they can have royal marriages? So maybe I was wrong about these nations not being able to have royal marriages because they are royal well married to Muscovy right now. So uh, yeah, I don't know how, oh, oh, they're well married to Muscovy because Muscovy is Norse, right. But yeah, they somehow got Berg as a junior partner as well, even though they can't royal marry them, I'm guessing the dynasty is the main thing at play here. Actually wait, Norway still exists. It is present in this province right here, allied to Denmark and revolutionary Great Britain, nice. But yeah, this is how things are looking like, this is the religion map mode, all of these nations of course were Norse, Denmark went back to being Catholic, Britain has converted Iceland to Catholic, Greenland and some provinces in Newfoundland are also Norse along with these few provinces in Central America. Sweden also forced Muscovy to be Norse apparently when they were their junior partner and Sweden have these two provinces right here. Lithuania blobbed a lot, the revolution went crazy over in Europe, lots of revolutionary nations and I would say about half of the nations in Europe are revolutionary and it did spawn in this province in Austria. So overall not a very strong game from the Viking nations. Pretty much not that different to what we see in regular EU4 games and I'm guessing the religion and all of these nations being independent didn't change too much except for the fact that Muscovy was able to push into Scandinavia sooner but then they themselves got PU'd and now they don't even have Moscow because Lithuania has taken it. Aside from that, Great Britain has had an awesome game. They've taken lots of provinces over in France. Castile didn't integrate Aragon but they do have lots of colonies. Portugal is successful too along with Austria. Austria. This is what the HRE looks like, so pretty big. Great success for them. Austria did manage to pass four reforms, now it's Protestant and uh, Lancehut is the emperor? What is this? Oh, I thought it was France. Guess not. The Ottomans had a decent game, nothing too strange in Africa, although Castile have colonized a lot of provinces they don't usually colonize over here. Going over to India, someone from Deccan, very nice, a rare nation right there. We have seen this once before in our what if videos. Looks like Ming isn't having that good of a game anymore. More. They have an Ashikaga on their throne? What's up with that? Well, that's not something you see every day. Japan is having a good game. Manchu formed early, but now they're pretty weak. This is Southeast Asia, dominated by British, Portuguese, and Castilian provinces. Also, we have Portuguese Australia in Central Asia. Transoxiana and Uzbek are dominating. The Mamluks still exist. This is the religious map mode in the world. We already saw it in Europe. A pretty strong reformation this game, I would say. Norse is still represented up here in Scandinavia 
Serbia and in parts of Russia and nothing else too out of the ordinary in the religious map mode maybe this is Shinto that would be a little out of the ordinary and this is Vajrayana so shout out to this uh, pretty big Yarkand they've moved from over here to over here that's pretty funny nothing too strange in Africa with the religions as well this is the usual in South America and in North America too taking a look at the culture map mode let's take a look at the Norse culture first oh it seems that they have lost out a bunch of provinces because Muscovy has been culture converting these to Karelian going back to the Norse culture we have some Swedish and Norwegian over here in North America Swedish over here and over here too and in Central America some Swedish and Norwegian provinces too nothing else out of the ordinary that I can notice in the culture map mode personally maybe you guys can notice while you're watching this and then tell me about it in the comments below taking a look at the great powers list Castile is at number one followed by Great Britain the Ottomans Austria Deccan Portugal Powhatan and Ming so none of the nations that we focused on are in the great powers list although Sweden was I think number six max at one point no one is a hegemon going over into the ledger Deccan have the biggest army in the world followed by revolutionary Austria the Ottomans Britain Castile Transoxiana the Pope and Powhatan revolutionary Great Britain have the largest income in the world with 602 ducats followed closely by the Ottomans Deccan Castile Ming Austria Transoxiana Powhatan and Lithuania and so on so yeah overall this isn't something I can say I exactly expected but I didn't think these nations would do too well either way especially with them being independent and I didn't think the religion would change much I did think Sweden would be the strongest nation although not through a PU over Muscovy but I just thought they would conquer their neighbors from Scandinavia maybe expand into the Baltic too maybe Norway would do some colonizing and I actually expected Gotland to do really well up here and uh, become the dominant power in North America at least in the eastern portion but I guess that never happened and they moved over to Canada so what would happen if the Vikings existed in 1444? Well, obviously, not a lot would change. In fact, the Nordic nations might even be weaker if Vikings existed in 1444. And I guess the current EU4 timeline is uh, better suited for the Nordic nations. That's all I can say. If you want this save file, this save game is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel. And if you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Red Hawk Live. Let me know in the comments below what's the next what if scenario that I should explore. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 30% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. And join the Discord, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.